watching the world burn, watching the world burn. August 3rd, 2024. Let's get into it. The, uh, I wanted to start off because, you know, a lot of people only watch the beginning of the video. And I thought this was a really cool propaganda video that came out of Russia. And the reason why I wanted to play this first for you was that a lot of people have misconceptions about Russia. Russia is an Orthodox Christian nation and a lot of people don't understand that I mean you know if you go back to the uh, I guess the days of the Soviet Union when everybody was pretty much an atheist but uh, not anymore I mean uh, they're deeply rooted in Christianity and uh, let's watch that video now Да светится имя Твое, да близит царствие Твое, да будет воля Твоя, а на небе и на земле. Хлеб наш насущный дашь к нам Спаси, Господи, люди Твои, и благослови на победы православных христиан, на сопротивные отдали. Wasn't that impressive? That was pretty cool. I, let's stay on uh, Ukraine and Russia for just a minute longer in the video because uh, I found this, I, I was most impressed with this. Uh, I don't know if you saw, we just did a prisoner exchange. Uh, the, you know, the guy that was in, for the, the, um, that reporter, I think it was the Wall Street Journal. Can't remember his name. And uh, anyway, it was about, uh, I don't know, was it 12 or 14 people that landed in Russia? But I found this video of Putin greeting everybody, and I wanted to just show you that real quick. Let's watch it. This uh, prisoner swap was arranged and mediated between, uh, from by Turkey between Russia and some countries of the West. Uh, Ten Russians were swapped in this deal alongside uh, 16 other uh, citizens of various countries. And of course, uh, they are just arriving right now. Uh, some of them were sentenced to various uh, numbers of uh, times in jail, and they are landing Russia right now, as well as those who have been released from Russia also uh, taking off. Uh, they have taken off long ago, also arriving in Turkey, where they will go onward to their various countries. And those who have arrived in Russia have been received by the president of Vladimir Putin there. Some of them have been in various prisons and uh, this negotiation has been on for some time. Some of them were sentenced to various uh, number of jail terms since 2022, some in 2023 and then others later this year and uh, they have been swapped in an agreement that has discovered or it's been termed as unprecedented because this is the largest number of uh, prison swap at the same time since the end of World War II. Now, these are members of the family as well who uh, are arriving. All right, Joseph, who has uh, landed and they've been greeted by the president Vladimir Putin welcoming them all home. Now, Russia's Federal Security Service has officially announced that eight Russian citizens have returned to their homeland 
following a prisoner exchange between Moscow and the West in Ankara on Thursday. Now, in a statement shared by the media, the FSB announced that the exchange was made possible thanks to the systematic uh, work of Russian government agencies and foreign partners. Uh, the service added that the Russian citizens were exchanged for a group of individuals who acted in the interest of foreign states to the detriment of the security of the Russian Federation. Uh, the FSB also noted that along with the eight Russian nationals, a minor children have also been returned to, to their homelands. Well, Russian President Vladimir Putin is there. You see him there. He has signed decrees to pardon the convicted Russian and foreign citizens who were exchanged in a prisoner swap with the West in Ankara on Thursday. And the list of those pardoned includes Wall Street Journal reporter Ivan Gashkovich, the former U.S. Marine Paul uh, Wellan, a journalist, uh, and several other opposition figures uh, have been named on the list as well. And according to the Kremlin's official website, you certainly see all of them there. It's noted on the Kremlin statement that the decision to pardon these individuals was made with the aim of securing the return of Russian citizens who had been detained and imprisoned in foreign countries. You have been loyal to your oath and you have served. So here you are back home. You will all be nominated to receive state awards. We will meet again to discuss your future. What you can't tell from that video is those kids, uh, they didn't even know they were Russian, <laughs> from what I understand. And, and they can't speak Russian, so Putin, to tell you, I mean, I tell you, man, I'm always impressed. You know, your adversary, you can admire your adversaries. And, uh, but evidently, he was speaking Spanish to the kids. I didn't even know Putin could speak Spanish. Now, maybe he was just memorized a few words, but he was speaking to the kids in Spanish. I mean, that was, that was crazy. Now, let's, let's contrast Putin greeting the people off of the plane and what it looks like when Biden <laughs> greets, greets the American prisoners off of the plane. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that crazy? 
Another thing I wanted to tell you about was with Putin. The, uh, the I tell you what, poor Schultz down in uh, Germany, they are just uh, lap dogs for the United States, aren't they? <laughs> the United States blows up the Nord Stream pipeline, you know, plunging their entire industry into chaos. Then uh, there was a guy, I guess he killed a Chechen uh, rubble or something in, in Germany. And I mean, did it brutally and in broad daylight. And they had him in jail. Uh, and so that was part of the exchange. And they do say that he was an assassin working for uh, President Putin. So that was, uh, that's pretty impressive uh, that uh, they were able to get, or Putin was able to negotiate getting a, a, a known assassin killer out of uh, Germany. And Germany went along with it. That's the part that gets me the most. So next, uh, let's go to the shit show that... I want to talk about the Middle East, but before we go there, because that's the most serious topic right now, but before we go there, let's talk about the shit show known as the Olympics. Oh my God, <laughs> it seems like every day something comes out that's crazy, you know? Well, first we had that opening ceremony. I don't know how much you've seen of that. I didn't watch the, I just caught clips on the X. I didn't watch any of it, thank God. I, I would have puked right there on the spot. But then, I don't know if you've seen the video. <laughs> <laughs> that Italian uh, woman, I've put her name in here, uh, she was up against uh, what they're saying is, you know, th this girl's or guy's testosterone was pretty high. And, uh, man, he hit her. <laughs> he took her head off, man. It was, I mean, the, the fight was over in 48 seconds. I mean, he hit her so hard she was crying, baby. <laughs> I mean, it was it was like holy shit i mean go go back and play that if i can find the video i'll put it on here on this uh, but man i mean it was just devastating and no wonder she was crying you know but and you think about it you know to to get to the olympics think of all the work that you have to do and then to get there and go up against what many people are calling a guy uh and just have your head completely taken off i mean what can you say so uh, that was the next thing. Then another story came out, and I don't know if you know the. I didn't realize triathlons are now a part of the Olympics. And uh, so what happened was they had a, they put them in the river there in Paris. Well, evidently, <laughs> well you know you got to remember when you're swimming a long ways, you're swallowing a lot of that water. Well, I guess that river must be pretty damn contaminated because there's pictures or videos of. All the, uh, well, not maybe not all, but a lot of them were puking after they were done with the swim. I mean, you know, I've never seen triathlon athletes puke before, but they were puking all over the place, man. It was a puke fest. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I'm laughing because, because it's kind of, when you think about all these people, I mean, I'll give you my puke story. And this was, uh, this was when we, um, when I was out in the Mojave Desert. And uh, we, uh, you know, when you're in a track, and uh, you know it's rolling across the desert. It's not a level place, and uh, and also you know even with the top being open, you still get all of that diesel fumes that blow back because the actual smokestack is in the front, which is poor engineering, in my opinion. And so not only you're breathing in a lot of diesel carbon dioxide, you're you're being bounced around all over the damn place. Desert is not a flat place, man. It's uh it's pretty brutal. So anyway, uh, one of the guys, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but he, he puked. And man, I'm going to tell you, I, that smell of puke just makes you puke. So everybody on the track just started puking. <laughs> it, was, it was puke everywhere, man. I mean, we were all on that track. We had to, we had finally got the driver to stop and everybody had to get out. Actually, we crawled out more or less because everybody was sick as a dog and got off the track and just crawled out the back. And just sat out there and breathed the air and and then uh, i don't even remember how we got all the puke up I, i'm wondering how we did it anyway that's my my puke story because you know i had to add to what what took place in the uh in the olympics so that's uh that's kind of the the news out of the olympics uh, there but let's get to the mid-east now this is the story of stories and i'll be putting i'll put some uh text in here but uh evidently uh, there was, you know, the Hamas uh, negotiator, he was in Tehran, and uh, I guess they had planted a bomb, or Israel, Mossad, had planted a bomb in this building uh, sometime in the past, which means they, you know, they've got that type of uh, network in, in Iran. I mean, they could kill anybody. 
But anyway, it was planted like a month ago. And so once they knew, and I don't know how they knew, maybe satellite images, but uh, I never never got the information about how they knew. But as soon as the, um, the Hamas guy entered the building, they detonated the bomb and killed him. And then uh, there was also a, a high-ranking Hezbollah leader, because uh, you know Israel's been taking out mid-level commanders all along. So Israel's like a rabid dog, man. They're going to bring the whole damn Middle East down on top of them. But anyway, so they've killed this high-ranking Hezbollah leader. And so what is the result of all this? Well, the, the, Colonel McGregor, if you follow him on X, the red flag of, uh, of war is now flying over Iran. I don't know what that means, but it sounds to me like they're going to strike in some kind of way. And, uh, I, and Hezbollah came out with a statement. I'll try to find it. And they said, you know, this is it. You know, we're done. We're done playing games. So there's going to be some sort of retaliation against Israel. I don't know what it's going to be. And then uh, McGregor's pointing out that it might go nuclear. Because that would mean that, you know, once Israel faces an existential threat, which means that it might cease to exist, uh, he says they'll probably use some tactical nukes on Lebanon. And man, I tell you, that, that would be insane. That could bring in Russia and China. I mean, and of course, Yemen. Yemen's down there uh, uh, fighting Israel. So, I mean, they're bringing the whole damn Middle East down on Israel. And then another report came out. And this is some sick, sick shit, man. Sick. But evidently, nine Israelis, they broke into a, um, a kind of a, a prison camp where, you know, they house all the Palestinian men. And they ripped this guy, the Palestinian guy's shorts off and sodomized him with a pipe. I mean, it, it, and then the guys, one of the soldier's wives was happy about it. <laughs> she said, well, it's just a Palestinian, uh, what do they call them, uh, uh, grass? Or I guess they're subhuman, you know, more or less to the Israelis. And she said it was just a Palestinian, who, who cares? So, uh, boy, I tell you, that, that's some sick shit, isn't it? <laughs> oh my God. All right, well, we'll get some more here in just a minute. Oh yeah, let's get into the financial picture now. Holy moly, the, the stock market was down a thousand points at one point. I think it finished off at 600 points down. Uh, so that's a major, major drop. And uh, you might want to take a look at Intel. Because uh, Intel, not only did they lay off a bunch of employees, uh, supposedly the stock dropped one hell of a lot. And uh, Intel used to pay a dividend. I, I'm assuming they still do. They might have cut the dividend though. Uh, given the you know the, the fact that their stock plunged and they're having to lay off employees uh, So you can check that out. I mean that's definitely been on my watch list for quite some time I have a I have a list of stocks that I'm waiting for the stock market to drop by about 50% Kind of like Warren Buffett and I'm just waiting for that to happen and then go up and buy some stocks So we'll we'll see what happens uh, And I uh, but I did want to throw that out. Of course. I still own the mining stocks, I highly recommend those. If you can get into a mining company, uh, the one that did a video here recently was on Dolly Pardon, I mean, Dolly, or Dolly uh, Metals. Okay, Dolly Metals is a good buy right now in the stock market. So you might want to check that out. And uh, I, I uh, and then I have another ticker symbol. I'll put them in, in the video when I, when I get home. So, uh, but Dolly, I think it's D-O-L-L-Y, I think that's the stock ticker symbol. I don't hold my feet to the fire on that. Like I said, I'll put it in the, in the video. So I did want to talk about the stock market for just a minute. And then I wanted to get into a, uh, a personal note. You know, I always try to help you in whatever kind of way. And, you know, th this is irrelevant to, to your situation. But I'm saying, it's it, well, it is relevant. Obviously, I wouldn't be talking about it. But one of the things I want you to do is take a look around, man. If you got an old car... In the, in the parking lot or you got uh, you know some some stuff in the house that you've been meaning to get rid of or give to charity make it so man you'll, you'll feel a whole lot better my cart unfortunately I'm out I'm gonna be out a thousand dollars I just put a lot of money into the cart trying to fix it and I shouldn't have it's 24 years old it's time for the cart to go I mean once you get reached 24 years old it's all par cart nobody will work on it nobody knows how to work on it. you can't get parts for it no more so it's kind of like when Plus, it'll give me a lot more um, area in my garage. So I had a guy come out and look at it. Well, first, I had to fix the sliding doors, and I hired a guy to do that. Paid him 100 bucks. It was worth every damn penny. Sliding doors work perfectly now, whereas I used to 
have to push on them and it was tough opening those doors. So you see how, you know, you just take care of a few things each day and you'll eventually get it all done. Uh, so next week they'll be taking that cart out of my garage and that'll give me a nice woodworking area where I can start working on some projects with woodworking that I've been meaning to do. I got to build some trellises for the tomato plants and everything. I unfortunately have waited too long. I mean my squash plant is dead but I did get two squash off of it so I guess that was, that was worth it I suppose. Although I probably paid more for the plant than, <laughs> than, the, than the two squash would have cost at the grocery store. I don't know. I don't know for sure. I don't know what squash costs these days. I'm not a huge squash person, but boy, you, when you cut it up and put some onion in there and fry it up and maybe add some spices, woo, it's, it's actually pretty tasty. I do like squash cooked that way. So that was my challenge to you is to get out and get rid of some stuff. Silver, once again, is back at about... 28, uh, 28 and some change. I want to say 28, 27. So even though the stock market crashed, silver didn't come down with it. I mean, it came down just a smidgen. So uh, I'm still telling you to buy silver. Get you some coins. Like I said, I use SD bullion. You can use whoever you want or just go into a, a reputable coin shop, pick you up some uh, junk silver, especially the dimes. Those are good for bartering. Uh, anyway, so there you go. Oh yeah, the uh, mayor of Philadelphia came out with a post on X. Uh, I guess the Democrats may have picked their vice president candidate, and that's going to be Josh, uh, I want to say it's Josh Shapiro, the Pennsylvania governor. He's going to be the Democrat uh, vice president nominee. So and he's, he's, got some, uh, he's got some ghosts in his closet, so I imagine a lot of stuff's going to come out. And the other thing I wanted to talk about with Democrats is, uh, what is it called? ACT? A-C-T? Anyway, it's a... Um, supposedly like a political action group and they're getting all of these small donations and the democrat coffers are going up by the millions <laughs> and then they're going out and interviewing people that supposedly contributed to the democrat campaign and the people are going no i didn't contribute anything so they're doing a huge money laundering scheme there you know and of course uh you know the coup that took place uh you know what and dan daniels did a good video and he pointed out you know, Congress has abdicated its responsibility for declaring war. You know, pretty much uh, we have a monarchy because President Biden, well, he's not president. I mean, whoever's running the government, they could just declare war on anybody that they want to. And Congress don't do anything about it. They don't even vote on it anymore. So if we go to war in the Middle East and Austin's already said, you know, if Israel is attacked, we're going to be right there with them. And uh, so I imagine we could have some dead Americans. And boy, if they hit those bases, that's going to be devastating. Because if they hit those bases with all the rockets and stuff, the American bases in Iraq and Syria, and uh, I'm not sure where else we've got bases over there, we're going to see a lot of dead Americans. And uh, you might even see a couple of American planes shot down. Because uh, I think Hezbollah might have some uh, anti-aircraft uh, uh, stuff in their arsenal. So uh, I'm not sure how good the planes are going to fare against that. Now, and also, I, I would be a little bit worried now that the carriers are going to stand off a long ways offshore. And, uh, and the planes can come in from there. But remember, you know, it takes a lot of fuel to fly those planes. And so the further away the carrier is, that's, the, that's that much fuel that's going to go away. And so how many sorties are those planes going to be able to fly before the carrier has to go into port? and refuel or refill up its tanks so that they can fly the planes. So that's one problem. And then the other thing, I wouldn't put it past uh, Hezbollah or Yemen to get, you know, let's say just a fishing boat. All they got to do is load a couple of drones on that fishing boat or whatever and get out there and get, get close enough to the carrier group where they could hit it with either some missiles or even, a, 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 I'm pretty sure they got those underwater drones now. So uh, the carrier groups could be uh, a big target uh, so that's uh, that's gonna be interesting but I do think I do think we're heading for a regional war in the Middle East I guess we'll see what happens I mean that red flag going up in Iran and the Hezbollah leader coming out and saying there will be retaliation I mean Israel's just crossed too many red lines too many red lines they're like rabbit dogs man barking at everybody blowing people up killing top-rated commanders imagine if I uh, Let's say that, you know, let's say General, let's say Austin went to visit Kiev and Russia uh, killed General Austin, which I would like. 
<laughs> I should say I like that. I don't want anybody to get killed, but it, it, maybe just get him injured enough where he'd have to step down and we can get somebody better in his place, you know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, because he's an idiot and a traitor, more or less. He's just doing the bidding, and that's, that's another thing. Why is the Pentagon not pushing back on the Biden administration? I don't get it, man. We got nothing but but lap dogs in the damn military that just do whatever the Biden administration tells them to do. It's ridiculous. Uh, on another note, boy, I tell you, I, uh, I'm, I'm here. This is August 3rd, and uh, I'm out enjoying. Good Lord. I mean, I bet the temperature's only about 80-some degrees. Feels like a damn winter day <laughs> here in Florida. And, you know, because I'm hiking in the evening. And the thing I don't understand about a lot of people is why don't you exercise when in the evening when things calm down? And also it's a great time to be out and about because uh, not only is the temperature way down, but you also don't have to deal with the, you know, like the crowds and stuff. You know, I remember back when, when I was married, you know, my wife liked to go out to eat. And we would get to these restaurants. Sometimes you had to wait an hour or two. This was before I broke my neck. You know, to sit there in line to get in there and just have a meal. And so it really bucks your whole damn evening, you know, when you go out to eat. Because by the time you get there, by the time you eat, well, order, get served, you know, wait in line and get out, you're looking at a good three or four hours of your evening gone. I'd much rather be out here hiking in the park, enjoying beautiful, beautiful weather. I mean, good God, I didn't, I'm glad I didn't come out this afternoon. The problem at this time of the year in Florida is the rainy season. So it rains just about every evening, so it's really tough to get out in the evenings. Just saying that on, on a note. Killed a wabbit. Killed a wabbit. Oh, there he goes. Well, anyway, three more things to add to the video. I had to get the rabbit on the video. We'll wait till the car noise dies down. I'll get the next clip here in just a second. So a couple other stories. Uh, <clears throat> getting back to the hostages that were released or traded with Russia. The... Uh, um, the one that gets me is the Gonzalez. I can't remember his first name. I'll put it in the video. He was in a Ukraine prison. And we've got all the leverage in the world. We've given Ukraine, what, $300 billion? And we couldn't get Gonzalez out of a Ukraine prison? In fact, the Biden administration let him die there? And yet we can get a Wall Street Journal prisoner and give up a terrorist to, to Russia to, to get him out of there. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The other thing I, I wanted to point out, you know, the war criminal Netanyahu, I uh, don't think that the Democrats aren't supporting him 100%. You know, Kamala, uh, she didn't go to the uh, the clapping seals there in Congress. They gave him 55 or so standing ovations, but uh, she did meet with him afterwards and pr pledged uh, support to Israel. So don't think the Democrats are innocent on this, and the Democrats vote unanimously every time to send the bombs to Israel. So they're they're worse than the Republicans, and I hope the Muslims aren't uh, falling for the fact that they what about a hundred of them didn't attend the uh, that uh, fiasco that took place in Congress. Speaking of the protest, uh, Max Blumenthal, I you know I remember the uh, Ben Netanyahu. He went on and on about. The protesters and how evil they are and everything. I mean, here's a foreign leader comes to the United States is going to talk about our First Amendment right to protest. And by the way, the protesters were kept a long ways away. Uh, but the thing that got me was Max said the NYPD was there <laughs> offering uh, uh, security. What the hell is the New York City Police Department doing? I guess, and then somebody pointed out that's a, I didn't realize the NYPD was so huge. I mean, so why is New York a, such a shithole right now when the NYPD can even spare officers to send to Washington, D.C.? Riddle me that, Batman. Other than their hands are tied, I think. You can't really, uh, I mean, because when you arrest somebody in New York City, you know, the prosecutors just put them right back out on the street or the attorney general or whoever. So I guess that's the reason why New York City is such a shithole. It's not because they don't have plenty of good police officers. Anyway, that was that was the other story. The, um, the, another one that got me was uh, Russia and China flew a uh, joint uh, exercise off the coast of Alaska. I didn't know that uh, China and Russia, well, I knew they conducted uh, shipping 
exercises, but now they're actually getting together and flying sorties. So it flew them right off of the coast of Alaska. And then somebody said that there was an Indian, because uh, I think there's still some naval exercises going on. And they said there was an Indian, maybe a couple of Indian ships. So now we got China, Russia, and India conducting military drills. That's crazy. Never heard of such a thing. Crazy, crazy, crazy. That occurred to me, you might not know who Max Blumenthal is. Uh, he appears on Judge Napolitano about once a week. And uh, he's always a really good guest. Very, very knowledgeable about all the crazy stuff going on. It's, uh, and his or news organization is called The Gray Zone. The Gray Zone. You can find them on YouTube. And I'm pretty sure they're probably on Rumble and other places. And they do a lot of good uh, reporting. Uh, you know, kind of like uh, my favorite channel... Well, the gray zone's good, but the redacted, you know, is always great uh, with Clayton. <laughs> so there, you know, on the redacted, and I encourage you to watch that. I will watch it on Rumble, though. A lot of times they can't report on things on YouTube that they can say on Rumble. And uh, so you can always catch redacted there. They come on at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, if you want to watch it live, I usually just wait till till they've posted and then go go watch it later on. But anyway, so that's who Max Blumenthal is. He's of the gray zone. Uh, of course, he, him, I'm not sure who else from the gray zone might have been at the uh, at the protest. And if you want to really learn about him, just watch him on Judge Napolitano. He was there on, on Judge's, uh, uh, Judge and Freedom uh, earlier today. Well, I just had a little statistic for you. Because I told you the commercial real estate's going to crash along with the real estate market. So a building in downtown Manhattan that just a few years ago they paid $332 million for it. Just sold for $8.2 million. Talk about a commercial real estate crash, huh? Woo! Boy, I tell you, it's been a great day. Not only weather-wise, but it had a hawk. Come about three feet from my head. I've never had one get that close to me before. It was a beautiful, beautiful sight to see. I'm glad he didn't scratch me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, one thing I did want to point out, you know, you, all these neocon idiots uh, clamoring for um, war in the Middle East, uh, you do know that if Iran gets into the conflict, the Straits of Hormuz, I guess, is that the straight through there? That's going to be shut down. That's going to that's going to be devastating to the whole world. Once shipping cuz now you got shipping in the Red Sea that's shut down by the Houthis and you'll have the straits there for uh, shut down next to Iran. So don't think war with Iran is a good idea. This is going to be bad. Real bad. So I just wanted to tell you that hawk story. And now to be it for today's video. Let's finish up with some Russian hardware. Peace out. Stay free. Есть закрепление пусковой установки за объектами поражения. Есть разблокировать шифр КБУ. Есть пуск готовность один.